Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, we are a webinar, we are a webcast, we're an online show. Uh, call us what you want. The terminology is up for debate, apparently. <laughs> um, whatever we are, we are here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but if you are unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do always record the show each week, so you can always come back and watch it as you um, are. Um, this is convenient to you. Um, we have our all of our recordings for all of our shows going back to the very beginning in on our website, which I'll show you at the end of today's session, so you can see how to get to them um, and see today's show or anything else we have posted. Um, we have a, we do a mixture of things here: um, presentations, book reviews, mini training sessions, interviews, um, basically anything. If it's related to libraries, we are um, happy to put it on the show. We also have we have Nebraska Library Commission staff uh, do presentations sometimes, but we sometimes also bring in guest speakers, um, and that's what we've done this morning. Um, on the line with us um, is uh, Steve Black from TechBoomers.com, and um, you are in Eastern Time Zone, correct, Steve? Yes, there I'm in the, uh, Canada. You're, you're up in Canada, right? Right. Do you get hit with any of the snow that we've been having? Not so much lately. Yeah. It's actually pretty warm here. It's oh. uh, yeah, like 12 degrees Celsius. Nice. I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. Well, that's good for you. Yes, we're all, all able to make it today. We had a big storm here le yesterday. I was not in, um, but made it in today, so we are all good. So, um, okay. yeah. So Steve is, the, as I said, the founder and CEO of TechBoomers.com, a uh, new website, uh, relatively new, what, year or two? <laughs> You've been One out? year, yeah. Yeah, um, with has a lot of great um, training for um, both you, your staff. So um, he's going to tell us all about their website and some other resources you can find out there. So I'm just going to hand over to you, Steve, to take it away. Okay, great. Thanks, uh, thanks, Chris. I really uh, appreciate the opportunity. It's been exciting for us um, over the last year since we launched. We've um, been lucky enough to connect with so many people and organizations that are passionate about digital literacy and uh, digital inclusion and um, you know, we've learned so much along the way, and <clears throat> this is a great opportunity for us to uh, share some of what we've learned, um, including how tech boomers can be integrated in your digital literacy programs, um, other great resources we found along the way, and just general tips um, that we've learned from people that have been teaching digital literacy uh, a lot longer than we have. <clears throat> this is my, I think, fourth uh, library-focused webinar. Um, I've reused, there might be some, uh, usually there's some people that I've seen, uh, the names I've seen in past webinars, um, but don't worry, I, I've reused some of the content from past presentations, but I've really tried to uh, expand and broaden the, the topics covered um, beyond just what is Tech Boomers and, and how to use it. So um, I think I have probably an extra 15 slides or something like that, so I'll try to get through them relatively quickly. Um, as Krista mentioned, we're going to have links pointed up. Uh, I'm going to be referring to a lot of websites and pages on Tech Boomers and elsewhere, um, but we'll have links at the end, and uh, the slide deck will also be available, I think, on the NLC website and on SlideShare. I'll show you a link at the end of the, the presentation. Um, I ideally really like the, this presentation to be as interactive as possible, so feel free to post questions in the comments section. I'll keep an eye on that, uh, and maybe if um, I don't see that, if I get wrapped up in what I'm saying, Krista can uh, point out any questions, but I'll do my best to answer uh, yeah, as many questions as that, um, as they come up as possible. Um, to get things yep, started, I'm, I'm curious. Yep, Steve, I'm willing to, yep, I'll interrupt as necessary, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, I, I like asking at the beginning, I'm curious, I see we have 31 attendees right now, which is great, but I'm curious to know um, where everybody is from and what their roles might be at, the, at their respective libraries. I just wouldn't mind uh, learning about that. Obviously, I'd, I'd imagine there's a number of people from Nebraska here. Um, but yeah, if you don't mind posting in the chat, I'd love to. Yeah, go ahead and type in the question section. Anybody, if you want to just say where you're from and what you're, what you are, what you do there. Um, oh, I, t I yeah. type in the question. No, they will. They they, they will. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, and I, so I can I read it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You won't be able to see these um, coming in, but um, we've got a head of adult services in Freeport, Illinois Public Library, deputy director in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, library director Atlanta. Atlantic Public Library in Iowa, uh, Jasper uh -huh. County, 
Garing, Nebraska. Yep. Floresville, Texas Library Director, Tech Coordinator Director, um, Assistant Librarian of the Focus in Technology and, and Technology Training in Hollis, New Hampshire, uh, Wisconsin, a Small Rural Library Director. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> From all over the place. Oh, yeah, great. Omaha, Nebraska, Little Falls, New Jersey, Digital Services and Serial Specialists. Sorry for anyone if I'm not catching yours or going by kind of fast and grabbing the ones that I can. <laughs> oh, somebody from snowy northern Nebraska is a library director and snow shoveler. Yes, we did get dumped on, as I said, the last day or so. <laughs> uh, cool. Campus okay, librarian so. at a technical college in Omaha. So, yeah, we're all over the place. Great. Okay, so I won't be able to see the chat, so you'll just pop up uh, with any questions. Okay, yeah. that sounds good. That works, yeah. too. Cool. Okay, so uh, hopping into the presentation, I'll, this is a new slide that some people mentioned that they'd like to know a little bit more about my background. Um, so yeah, a quick bit about my history and past experiences and, and kind of skill set. Uh, I started off, off in post-secondary education as a software engineering student. I uh, took a, quite a diversion of a career path after that. Uh, in third year, I actually left school to play professional poker. Um, it's one of my more unique uh, bits of my history. I did that full time for a couple years. I wasn't super happy. I didn't really want to become a, a computer programmer the rest of my life, although I did like aspects of software engineering. I found it interesting. But um, yeah, I did that for a couple years, traveled around quite a bit, um, and then got bored of it and went back to school and then ended up starting a company in 2007 that built uh, a social network for poker players called PokerSpace.com. That was my first real entrepreneurial experience. Uh, learned, a, learned quite a bit with that. Uh, ran that company for about uh, four and a half years. Um, started to wanted to move on to something else. I was always looking for, at least in the later years of poker space, something more, a little more purposeful uh, in, in the entrepreneur opportunity I was um, seeking. Um, most of my business ideas at the time revolved around publishing free content online. Uh, obviously, Tech Boomers falls under that category. It was kind of the, the main idea that I had. Um, so I got into search engine optimization consulting in 2013, which uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, that's basically driving, um, optimizing websites and adding articles and content to websites to um, get traffic from search engines like Google. Um, that was a great experience. I'm still doing that on a side to actually pay the tech boomers bills as we're starting to add some uh, advertising to drive revenue to pay the bills. Um, but yeah, in 2015, uh, my team and I launched TechBoomers.com. We started working on that. I started working on that about six, seven months prior. And um, and a little personal bit, tidbit, our entire team works from home. Um, and that's mostly so I can hang out with my dog and, and run with him every day. That's a little picture of him as a puppy. He's a, a cute chocolate lab. Um, and I say that kind of to bring it up. If you do hear a dog barking in the background, he's kind of uh, sleeping in my bedroom right now. Um, but he might bark, so I apologize for that in advance if that happens. Not a problem. I'm sure that'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the idea for Tech Boomers was actually originally inspired by my mom, Linda. Um, she used email actively, did some online banking, and dabbled with a few websites here and there. But uh, technology in general um, and all these different websites and apps were always really overwhelmed her. Um, but she was always interested in learning more. She wanted to learn, learn how to use Skype to make free long distance phone calls to her grandson, Michael, with video chat. Um, another example, she wanted to use Facebook, obviously, to share and post photos for her friends and family to see. And Netflix really interested her as well. Um, she hated paying her expensive monthly cable bill and loved the idea of watching basically unlimited TV shows and movies um, for $8.99 a month, commercial free. So there are all these different other websites and apps that she wanted to try out. Um, and, and there's so many other ones that she randomly hear of, and, and she knew that all of them existed. And, um, I wanted to help her as much as I could, but I wasn't always necessarily around um, to teach her. And the other aspect, too, that she, she knew about, and this is you know, one of the most important aspects of digital literacy, is just being able to protect herself and, and use technology and the Internet safely. Because uh, whether people like it or not, in general, a lot of things are going online these days. Uh, as an example, there are some um, Canadian forms, uh, like government forms, that you basically have to um, fill out online. And to do that, you need to really understand the dangers of the internet from a safety perspective in that case, but also from a privacy perspective if you're using uh, social media or other types. So you have to use proper protection, antivirus software, other tools like password managers, um, and just use best practices and staying up to date about um, internet uh, threats and risks is just so important. So that's such a big aspect of digital literacy and we really focus on, on those um, we have a couple different courses on internet safety and privacy and passwords, but 
We also touch upon it as much as possible with tips and tricks of how to make you know, Facebook more private. For example, we have three different tutorials on Facebook privacy. Uh, but for my mom, it was how to get started. That was the, the tough part, and it is for so many other people too. Uh, friends and family are a great way to kind of start to learn, but usually there's time limitations. In my case, I lived over an hour away. Um, I went online to see if there was a, kind of a Coursera-style website where she could self-learn, and I didn't find anything. Um, a lot of what I found were articles that were out of date and missing information and confusing and just not in the structured learning environment that she needed. Um, since then, I found some other great resources, which I'll mention uh, in the future uh, or in, later in this presentation. But um, for the most part, when it came to learning how to use websites and apps um, that could improve our lives, like the ones I mentioned, there isn't a ton of good training content, and it's difficult to find uh, for the most part. And you know, we all know that the internet can be overwhelming and, and intimidating at times, especially for those new to technology. And it's so hard for those um, pe people that are new to technology to know which websites are right for them and can they trust the website or app and how can they protect themselves and how much it really costs and et cetera and et cetera. Um, and that's really why we built techboomers.com. Um, like I said, inspired by my mom, but um, she really is kind of that our main user. Um, um, so, so far we have 60 courses, um, free courses. They range in tutorials between six and 25. Some of our longer courses have, but overall we have uh, close to a thousand free video and article tutorials. Uh, we release a new course every Monday around noon. Um, early on, we added a feature that allowed, we started off more of a library of kind of structured content, um, but some of our early partners, including a lot of librarians, were suggesting that we add some course functionality where um, people can create an account and track their progress. Um, overall, our mission is really to improve, improve the lives uh, of older adults by empowering them to use technology. Um, or just anybody that wants to empower their own lives to use technology, really. Um, uh, just to give you some metrics of kind of where we're at right now and how we get our traffic, uh, last month we had over 95,000 people across 100 countries uh, visit our website to learn how to use technology in one way or the other. Um, most of our traffic, as I mentioned, comes from, uh, maybe I didn't mention this, but my expertise in search engine optimization has been quite useful. Um, about 85 sometimes 90% of our traffic comes from organic search. So people will search things like, what is Netflix? And we're ranked in the top three for that one. Or um, how to create a Facebook account or how to delete accounts. Um, all of our articles, or at least most of them, are optimized for um, a search phrase that someone who is looking for a good piece of content um, to help them find us and, and um, ideally help, help them you know, sign up to Tech Boomers and, and start the learning process from there. Um, we are forecasting a, a good growth traje trajectory. Um, you know, we're, we're actually expecting a year from now to be having about uh, three quarters of a million monthly students um, or monthly visitors to a website at least that are learning and, and at least using one article or more. Um, we're, we are definitely all over the world. Um, basically, where any, any, wherever anybody is searching something in, in English, um, primarily in the U.S., I think we're about uh, 70 percent U.S. last time I checked, maybe 65, um, but in the U.K. and Canada and, yeah, like I said, wherever anybody's searching something in English, we, uh, we have a presence and we, we drive some traffic from that, that country. Um, one question that I always get, it gets asked early, so I like to make this as clear as possible on how we make money. Um, our courses, at least the ones that are on Tech Boomers right now, um, the, yeah, the main courses on Tech Boomers will always be free for both users and partners. Uh, I say that the main ones, down the road we might add some more advanced courses that we might charge for, but all the ones that are on Tech Boomers right now will always be free, I promise you that. Um, in the future it might be like how to, we might create a paid course that's like how to um, promote um, um, your business on Facebook or something like that, but the core training will always be free. Um, we will be focusing on advertising websites and online services that we teach. Um, in the future, we'll also be looking to establish partnerships with different types of online sites and services that we teach people how to use. Um, and another question that gets asked quite commonly is if we'll ever sell usage data, and, uh, and we won't. Online privacy is really important to us and our partners and our users. So who is Tech Boomers built for? Um, like I said, my mom was kind of the inspiration for it. Um, she's a 50-plus uh, older adult. Uh, that's our main target, and we, we phrase in um, a lot of our tutorials and use examples that are um, 
specific to, to the 50 plus audience, but it's really for anybody that has limited computer skills. Uh, it was also built for tech teachers, so anybody who teaches friends and family how to use technology. Um, and then something early on, we realized how useful what we're doing can be for tech training organizations, uh, libraries, and nonprofits, and even for profits. And we'll we'll talk a little bit uh, about that right now too. Um, so yeah, early on, actually, um, a friend of mine um, mentioned she used to work at a library. Mentioned how useful and how libraries do digital literacy training, which I knew about, but I didn't know too much about it. Uh, so I went to a, a library conference, the Super Conference here in Ontario, Canada, and connected with a lot of librarians and. Um, there was a lot of excitement in, in their voice when they talked about how you know tech members could be useful for them because it can be uh, difficult and time consuming to create training materials on their own. Um, so we've been working with tech training partners ever since and many mostly libraries to be honest and it's been great for us too. It's a great two-way street because they provided early adopters who provided feedback like I said about the uh, course functionality that was um, recommended by a lot of our early partners. And one thing I always like to, to make clear to what we're doing at Tech Boomers, um, I really think goes hand in hand with the in-person training. Uh, we're certainly not trying to replace that. It's especially important early on, but I think a good mix of online and in-person training uh, is ideal for, for people that are learning. Even if they're uh, savvy enough to just be learning from Tech Boomers on their own, I still think the in-person classes are, are so important to maintain that engagement um, and motivation for sure. So as we started working with tech training organizations, um, we really started to get more involved in the digital inclusion and digital literacy community. Um, and we just discovered and learned about all these different um, organizations, um, you know, including um, that were involved in this uh, kind of movement, I guess you could, you could call it. Uh, but yeah, tech training organizations, online safety organizations like uh, Stay Safe Online and the Family Online Safety Institute, um, we're partnered with them. We do some a lot of guest posts, and we help promote each other when we can. Um, digital inclusion, inclusion organizations that are helping people uh, who don't have access to broadband, like Internet Essentials, um, community websites, which we'll talk about. Um, there's so many interactive tools for computer basics out there, and then um, the training material resources, which is you know Tech Boomers falls under, and I'll mention some of the other great ones as well that I've learned about since we launched. Uh, so a couple of the community websites, um, digitallearn.org, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about it. Uh, it's fantastic. I highly recommend you sign up for their bi-monthly newsletter. Um, it has a lot of great news and information about digital literacy in general and um, about webinars that are coming up. And, and they have a, um, a forum section where digital literacy teachers or anybody can post in there and ask questions, and, and it's great. I know they are in the middle of um, adding more content to their website because they also have training and, um, and upgrading their website in general. I'm excited to see uh, what those changes bring in 2016. Um, and TechSoup slash, uh, I guess TechSoup Global slash TechSoup for Libraries, uh, they have a forum section. They focus on a lot of topics as I'm sure you, any of you know about them, um, but they do have a specific forum that are, kind of revolves around digital literacy. Um, but they also have great webinars and you know resources and news, so I recommend them as another um, website and kind of community to to get involved in. Um, we learned early on as well about some digital literacy tools. There are many, many of these um, across the internet, um, and they're great for teaching people you know the basics of how to use a keyboard and how to use a mouse. Um, here are a couple of the ones that are, we think are really, really good. Uh, GCF Learn Free, which I'll be talking about uh, throughout this presentation. They're, the work they do is great, and they have some interactive tools that are awesome. Um, Senior Net has a great mouse exercise tool, and there's so many of these out there. These are just some that we recommend for how to use a mouse and how to use the keyboard. Um, these links will be available uh, afterwards, so you don't, uh, don't be scrambling to write them down quickly. Um, but yeah, when it comes to free educational websites, um, when it, I think when it comes to kind of total content, the amount of content, um, Tech Boomers and GCFLearnFree.org, I think will probably have, you know, in at least have the most content for sure. Um, we focus on slightly different niches. As I mentioned, Tech Boomers is um, how to use websites and apps to improve quality of life with an older adult focus. Whereas um, what I've gathered from GCF Learn Free is um, their their website is more for career skills development. 
Um, obviously, that includes a, a big part of that is how to use technology, and they have some awesome tutorials, especially on how to use Microsoft Office, um, computer basics, like the very basics as well, and operating systems, and um, they have a ton of great content there. Uh, to mention a couple other sites, um, uh, git.google.com slash tips. Um, you guys might have noticed there was a website called Teach Parents Tech uh, that got actually pretty viral back in the day. It was uh, employees from Google that provided video, um, very short video uh, tutorials on how to do the different things like copy and paste and a whole other number of things. Um, they moved all that content to this slash google.com slash tips website. Um, it is only about, at this point, Google products and services, but there's just a lot of very short videos that are, are useful, so you can go through there to see if um, your students might like any of those. And I mentioned digitallearn.org. Um, they have um, a lot of video content, and they're going to be expanding that. And a couple other ones, digitalunite.com. And I recently found out about Computer Hope, too, which I'm surprised it took me so long to find out about because they have... Um, a ton of content, um, mostly about kind of computer um, basics, um, not really about the internet uh, too much, but still a ton of great content. So we, I recommend them as well. And then a couple uh, directory um, pages, I guess, or I guess um, digitalliteracy.gov is a directory site, whereas the second link there um, to the alaska.gov, um, they were actually gracious enough to let me do our first library webinar, and this was probably eight months ago, so that got me started with the webinars, and they have a great uh, section on their website that lists a lot of these great resources, and um, in most cases, I, they're on um, the sites that I've mentioned um, on this slide. So now we'll get into um, six different ways that um, you can leverage these educational resources. Usually, I, I, this slide is six different ways you can leverage tech boomers. Um, but I think they most of these broadly apply to uh, GCF Learn Free and the other resources I've mentioned. Although you have to check with their um, their rules and regulations and guidelines for some of these, especially number six there. But I won't read off them right now because we're going to go into a slide about each of them. Um, so number one, obviously these are just great resources that you can recommend your for your students where they can self-learn. Uh, so you can recommend Tech Boomers or another one of these sites if you don't offer a class about that specific topic or if you don't have time for one-on-one -on -one training um, or if you just aren't familiar with that specific website or app. Um, you can recommend it to the student and then maybe yourself go to um, go to that course on the website and, and start learning. Um, we do have a couple um, resource pages uh, in our footer that um, you can use to help recommend uh, or to help build awareness about Tech Boomers. Um, we have a page called Marketing Designs page, which is accessible via our footer, where you can download different flyer and postcard and bookmark designs that you can put up in your computer lab or, um, or hand out to, to people. Um, I know GCF on free, they have uh, flyers as well that they can, you can download, and I think that's accessible via their footer too. So um, it's an easy way to just you know, recommend it to people that are in your computer lab and, and looking to learn. Um, and then also adding links to Tech Boomers and these sites on, on your website. If you have resource pages or you want to, you know, you, some of some libraries, uh, some of our partners even link to us from their menu or from their homepage. They'll put up our, our logo and um, a brief description about what Tech Boomers is. Uh, it's just a kind of a no-brainer way to recommend um, people to Tech, to, to Tech Boomers and the other sites. Um, another big way um, that you can leverage our resources to kind of um, expand your, your patrons' knowledge is to just share our content with your social media followers. It can be um, time-consuming at times for all social media managers, including us at Tech Boomers, to continuously find engaging and useful content for your followers. Um, and, you know, reposting or posting our content, sharing it on Tech Boomers and all the other sites. Um, it's a great way to motivate and excite students about different uh, types of websites and apps and give them a resource in which they can start learning. And, you know, with 900 tutorials on Tech Boomers and many, many on GCF Learn Free and other websites, there's just a wealth of, of worthy content to share. Um, so you can, um, if on our site and on GCF, and I think most of these sites, they have social sharing bookmarks, which I'll point out um, when I'm going to give a site tour shortly. Um, so you can share the content, just browse our websites, find a course page that you like, or find a tutorial that you think your social media followers would find interesting, and just share it directly from, from that page. Um, we also, at Tech Boomers, um, and I'm sure some of the other 
uh, educational websites as well, like Digital Learn, for example, have newsletters. So I recommend signing up for, for those. Um, we send out at Tech Boomers a newsletter every Tuesday in the morning. Um, basically, we highlight the course that we just released on Monday. And we also provide some uh, links to other popular content. Um, that was The newsletter was actually requested by some of our partners early on um, as a way to stay up to date with the, the new and most popular content so they can you know, find things to share easily. Uh, so the idea is on Tuesday morning, here's a new course and here's a bunch of tutorials that maybe they can plug into their um, social media or scheduled social media posts for, for the week. Um, but moving on to really the main way that we're trying to help libraries um, is um, encouraging them to leverage our training materials in, and to use in their existing programs. Um, it can be really difficult and time consuming, as I've heard, to maintain up-to-date training materials for websites and apps that are constantly changing. Um, this is especially true for smaller organizations and smaller libraries that where you know digital literacy teacher is only a part of their uh, the role at that library, and in some cases they only have a few hours a week to actually do it. So, um, you know, if you run a course on Facebook and you realize or you notice that. Um, Facebook just changed their entire interface and now you have to spend 20 hours updating all the training materials. You know, look towards other resources to, um, to leverage that content because we keep our articles up to date. Um, I would bet that GCF Learn Free does as well and many of these other websites. So, um, you know, this content is free and it's online. So, um, you know, so at Tech Boomers and I know GCF too, um, you can print up, our, print up the tutorials and use them as handouts. Um, share the video tutorials with your students in the class. And another great way to is uh, assign um, online tutorials for homework to continue learning at home. So if you run a, um, sorry, so if you run, let's say, a introduction to Facebook two-hour class, and then um, you're planning on having another kind of follow-up class next week, maybe suggest that they go home and after they've created an account and learned the basics about Facebook, maybe suggest they go to Tech Boomers and learn about uh, Facebook privacy and kind of assign those as homework um, Yeah, for them to continue learning at home and continue that, that self-learning process. Um, in addition to obviously leveraging our content for existing classes, you can always start new classes using our training materials. Um, at Tech Boomers, like I said, we have over 60 courses for, on websites and apps. Uh, I've highlighted a couple of ones that are particular interest to libraries I found, um, Ancestry, Lynda.com, and Overdrive. Um, those were all actually suggested by librarians, and um, yeah, so um, also let me know about any other websites you'd like us to, to teach. Um, we're always looking for suggestions and feedback. And um, so those are some Tech Boomers courses. Uh, I mentioned GCF Learn Free. I've said they have great courses on computer basics, operating systems, um, MS Office, and social media. And another kind of structure of class that um, we've talked to our partners about and we're all kind of excited about is what we call drop-in self-learning sessions. And the general idea behind these is that students um, or you set up regular classes where students come in with their own devices or maybe they use some in your computer lab and the students just choose a topic on Tech Boomers or another site and just start working their way through the tutorials and, and self-learning um, and then ask questions to the teachers as they come up. Um, the benefits of this class, obviously, uh, this encourages self-learning. Um, you can teach more students at the time, and very importantly, um, there's no ongoing preparation for the teachers. You don't have to, um, uh, maybe aside from familiarizing yourself with a variety of these topics, but um, yeah, you don't have to prepare a bunch of training materials and know what you're going to talk about during that class for um, for two hours or whatever the amount of time in. So. Um, I'd recommend running these types of classes as experiments to see if they work. Um, yeah, they're, I think they um, you know, could be really useful, especially for those um, digital literacy teachers that don't have a lot of time on their hands, and um, it's a great way to encourage uh, students to self-learn. Um, so the last way, and this, this might be only specific to tech boomers, um, I'm not sure about the other websites, but one thing that we've done from the from the beginning is we've written a lot of guest posts for our for our library partners and our nonprofit partners. Um, they've asked us, they've seen our content, and they you know we've reached out to them and asked them if they want us to do any guest posting because blogging you know can be very very time consuming to know what to write about um, and then actually write it. Um, we've written over 40 guest posts I think so far. 
Um, but as I mentioned, it can be very time consuming and it has been for us too and we have a very small team. So what we decided to do is basically make a number of our articles available for you to repost on your blogs. Um, there's a bit, I, there's 20, it says 20 there. We just launched this literally a couple days ago. I think there's 15 right now, but that should get up to 20 probably within a couple of weeks. Um, so as far as the types of posts, so far they're mostly introductions to popular websites and apps. So for example, um, one of them is what is Facebook and its most popular eight features or um, how to get the most out of Instagram and those types of things. Um, we also have, we'll have more on internet safety and privacy. Um, one of the ones that we have right now is um, best antivirus software solutions and it kind of explains what antivirus software is in the first place too. Um, and in the future we'll have kind of top 10 lists and best of the web lists as well. Um, but if you're interested, we have a footer page, um, post our articles is the name of it. Um, and if you just want to learn more, you can um, email me as well. Yeah, Steve, I was just noticing that you had the, um, when I, I saw that there at the bottom of your page, uh, also that you have, I think, the Creative Commons license. I thought that was very cool. Yes, that was, uh, again, suggested by our partners. Um, they, they asked me about, you know, what, what is our position on that, and I didn't even know what it was, to be honest. So I looked <laughs> up and, yeah, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of content on our site, so um, we wanted to kind of put people at ease by, by adding that structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a Creative Commons share with attribution, meaning you guys can reshare it, use it, but make sure that you just cite the fact of where you got it from. Yeah, yeah, we, um, so on that post our tutorials page, we go into detail about how to provide proper attribution in that, and mm -hmm. if any of that's confusing, yeah, please feel free to, to get in touch and ask me, we can work through it together. Yeah, that's very important, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Okay, cool. So, um, wow, time is flying. It's already 35 after. Um, still have a bunch of slides, like eight more, but I want to do a quick site tour. Yep, that's no problem. Um, for anyone who's online, um, officially we do go um, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central Time an hour, but if we do run long, we'll just keep going until everything's wrapped up, until I'll um, Steve's done with his presentation and all of your questions are answered. So if you do uh, need to leave right when we officially end, that's fine. It's all being recorded, and you'll be able to come back and watch it later. Okay, perfect. Good to know that, um, yeah, if I run a little bit yeah. long. Okay, we run great. long. It's not a problem. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. So... Here is Tech Boomers. Um, so I'll give you guys a quick site tour, point some things out. Um, yeah, let's let's hop into that. So as I mentioned, you can sign up for an account um, through Tech Boomers um, to track your progress. Um, we added the, the functionality so you can quickly create an account with a social media account um, or a Google account, um, or you can do it the old-fashioned way by name, email address, and password. Um, so I'm just going to log in myself with um, an account that I've used and log in via Facebook. Um, so you start off on our home page, but one of the kind of the hub of the logged in pages is the My Courses page. You'll see the link at the top here. Um, this basically just lists all of the courses that you've joined or completed one tutorial in. And then at the bottom, um, this account hasn't completed any courses, but they would be displayed um, down here. So we'll hop into our Facebook course. Um, so as you can see, I've completed six of the 18 tutorials. Um, I will point out that a lot of our courses, they have also have some additional resources at the end. These aren't part of our actual courses, but they're just extra tutorials um, that many of our users have requested and found useful, like how to change your password. Um, we didn't include these in our courses because they're not really necessary until they are necessary. Um, so usually the people will know to, to check to see if, you know, if they're ever looking to delete their Facebook account. They know that we have a lot of deletion or how to delete your account articles um, as well. So moving back up to the top. Um, so basically if there's a green check mark beside the um, name of the tutorial, uh, that means it's completed or you've marked it as complete. Um, oh, here's the social sharing um, icons and um, our bookmarks are on the left. Um, on our course pages, we also have them in the top right, which is a bit of overkill. We'll probably remove them soon. Um, but on our tutorial pages, they're just in the left column here. Uh, so I'll go to the next logical tutorial, uh, which is the last one in the Facebook privacy section, which is using Facebook list for privacy. Um, so I've mentioned that we have both video and article tutorials. Um, unfortunately, we fell um, quite behind in our videos um, to go with the tutorials and in the future we definitely will be playing catch up 
Um, creating videos just takes a lot more resources and time than uh, than our articles. So, um, but we do plan on catching up at least for the most um, used kind of social media and online shopping and entertainment uh, courses, our most popular courses. We do plan on catching up with. So I will play the video, but you guys can do it on your own to, to check them out. Um, but all of our tutorials, they have. Um, yeah, they have generally have a lot of screenshots with red boxes to point things out. We bold, you know, things, um, and then highlight them in the in the tutorial um, or in the in the screenshots. Um, yeah, a lot of big screenshots. Um, so yeah, we also have in some cases um, these little yellow buttons on the screenshots, and they're basically just little pop-ups. So point those out. So we use them a lot when we have menus or we have screenshots of menus or account page uh, settings pages. Um, basically, there's so much to write about for each of these little areas that um, it's a great way to kind of um, interactively click to see what different things are. Uh, once you're done a tutorial, um, there's a Mark is Completed button at the bottom. It's also in the top right here. But once you click that, um, it turns green, Mark says tutorial completed, and you basically just mark this tutorial off as, as complete, obviously, as the words say. Um, and then you can go to the previous or the next tutorial. So we'll click next for the tour tutorial. And then, you know, start and fresh again. And um, yeah, here's another screenshot with a lot of these little yellow buttons to point out different things on it. Um, I mentioned that we encourage people to print our tutorials, and here is the gray button to do that. So you just click it, and then from here you can print it directly, or you can um, create a PDF and then print that up yourself, or you can also email it as well. You can change the text sizes, remove the images. Um, this is a, kind of a useful plugin that um, we've been using. Um, another button that's somewhat useful, um, go back to the course page, which I'll click now. And as you can see, now 7 of 18 tutorials are completed. And we have your standard My Account page where you can change your email address and password and all that. Um, Krista pointed out in the footer we have the created Creative Commons uh, license information. Um, I've mentioned a number of these pages throughout the presentation already. Um, like our uh, partner newsletter page, our marketing designs page. I'll pull these up very quickly. Um, we have a course directory page, which is a quick way to, um, I'll do that one first. Basically a quick way to see all of our courses on one page, um, sorted by category, which by the way are different menu items. So um, basically if you're looking for a specific course, um, try to think of which menu item it would fall under, whether it's an educational website, a shopping website. Uh, every day is kind of a little bit vague. We're going to be working on that and probably changing it, but just basically websites and apps that are useful that you use every day. Um, our marketing designs page I mentioned, so you can click uh, any of these boxes to download uh, via Dropbox um, flyers and bookmark designs and logos and you know any type of marketing design you'll you'll potentially need. Partner newsletter, very simple, a little form to fill out, and this will join you automatically. Um, you can also email me at steve at techboomers.com, and I can um, sign you up myself and add you manually. I mentioned the link to us page, really just some suggestions on where you can link to Tech Boomers, and then some actual instructions on how to do it if you're not familiar with adding code or HTML code to your website. Um, and here is the, art of the page that... Um, has information on how posting your articles on your blogs, uh, your blog works. Um, this is a big download link that will take you to a Dropbox directory or folder that has access to the 15 posts right now that you can download. And within that folder, we have, um, you know, as you as you saw, a lot of our tutorials have screenshots. So we'll within each of the folders that for each of the articles that you could download, um, we also provide all of the images so that you don't have to, um, you know. Um, pull the images directly from our website. They're easily and easily easy to download and, and, and upload to your uh, editor or however you do it on your blog. So I think that covers all the main bases. Um, contact form, pretty standard. So I'll get back to the uh, presentation now. Bear with me. 
No, but we do have a question about your courses, um, asking about a specific one. Sure. Um, and I'm not sure if you're going to get into this or not, but do you have um, courses to teach some things like Windows, um, specifically Windows 10, <laughs> that people are now <laughs> potentially being forced into um, and are confused by? <laughs> Uh, we do not. It's something from the beginning I thought we'd actually do sooner than later. Um, mm -hmm. However, we, we didn't because, I'll be honest, GCF Learn Free is doing it already and they're doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. So we thought we'd really focused on areas and, and websites and apps and technologies that weren't covered already pretty well. So Elsewhere. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure GCF Learn Free has it, but I would bet they do. And if they don't have it now, I'm sure they'll have it soon. Yeah. Yeah, I've used that site before. Um, let's see, I'm just checking now. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. yeah, I'm looking to see. Um, Let's see if I can just do a search on here. Uh, but if they don't have it, there may be lots of oh, other yeah, places doing do it as well. They do? Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, if you go to yep. their there we go. home page in technology and then look under Windows and it's Windows 10. Yep, so they do. Yep. Um, yeah. I did a search. There's that at the bottom of their page, they've got a search screen and it's got free Windows 10 tutorial, features, getting started, frequently asked questions, tips, yeah, a whole bunch of different things. So um, oh, gcflearnfree.org. Um, and we'll have that included in the links um, afterwards for the show, so you'll be able to jump to that quickly if you can't just Google it. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah as, I, as I said, um, they they have a lot of great tutorials on that, so we didn't really want to spend time, you know, duplicating content. You know, oh, sure. <laughs> the whole point of Tech Boomers and sharing it with libraries is to reduce uh, redundant content on the internet, or you know, reduce the amount of the requirement of other people to create the same content. So we've stayed away from that. We might add it in the future. Um, but that's not on the radar anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, so moving on to some um, general um, slides about how to engage and motivate students. Um, this particularly, I would say mostly, well not mostly, but um, it applies especially to, to older adults who um, aren't familiar with technology. Um, a lot of the time it's, you know, they're um, They'll just say to themselves or to their potential teacher or someone who say, no, try this out. You know, my life is, is fine the way it is. And uh, to get past that barrier, as, as I'm sure many of you know, um, you know, it's so important to establish rel relevancy um, and, and providing as much relevancy as possible and don't overwhelm them with information. Um, and we find the best way to do this or we've, um, yeah, is to, you know, find a very specific targeted example of how technology can improve their life. Um, and, and really focus just on that one thing, whether it's, um, you know, maybe they have a hobby or a passion about gardening, for example, and there's a great gardening website where you can learn about plants and flowers and et cetera, or maybe they um, have transportation issues and um, something like Uber would be awesome for them, or um, they can't go out grocery shopping and there's all these grocery delivery websites these days, or whatever the reason is, you know, get to know the person as much as possible and have a conversation with them. and you know, try to find an online solution for that that problem or that potential way that can improve their life. And, you know, I'll go through these sites pretty quickly, but as we said, there's just so many ways and so many examples out there, Facebook and Skype, uh, to communicate with family and, you know, eHarmony even to meet new people and Twitter for, um, you know, real-time news and information, uh, saving money on entertainment with Netflix and YouTube, or uh, one specific example, which is very specific, but, um, you know, let's say you're the person you're trying to encourage to use technology loves playing hearts um, or another card game like Euchre um, to show them you know that you can play online if they only get to play once a week with their friends um, show them that they can go online to play with their friends or play with other people um, and just use that one specific example to um, to encourage them and, and just focus on that one and of course many other websites to save money online um, learning anything for free online is amazing these days um, you know, with Coursera and all the uh, university course websites, Wikipedia, TED.com is one of my favorites, um, has like the latest um, findings of in the world of tech and science and all basically any type of niche really, it's, it's fantastic. Um, and technology can just make life simpler, like shopping from your own home or 
If you're always getting lost when you're driving, Google Maps is a pretty great solution, or Yelp to find a great place to eat if you just move to a new city. Um, some general other tips for engaging students, um, you know, in your content that you create, just comparing digital things to um, real life actions and real life things, comparing, you know, the most basic example I can think of is comparing the email to um, just mailing a letter, snail mail, I guess people call it sometimes, but, you know, using, you know, real life examples to compare or make parallels to digital, digital um, topics is, is a great thing to do. Um, your lesson should be as interactive as possible, and one way to do that is to have them complete tasks in the moment. Don't just run a, a two-hour seminar on how to use Facebook where people just listen about, you know, all the different things you can do. Have them, you know, after you maybe talk about it for 20 minutes or 10 minutes or even less, have them create an account and then have give them a tour while they're clicking around themselves. Um, they'll generally learn a, a lot quicker when they're, when they're um, you know, performing tasks. Um, encourage self-learning as much as possible. That's what we're all about. Um, in the classroom and at home. Um, and when possible, um, provide both video and text-based training. Uh, again, that's been a um, something that we'll be, we're going to be definitely working towards on Tech Boomers um, in the future. But if you can, if you can find both options, uh, people learn in different ways. So if you can uh, offer both, that's that's ideal. And, you know, I, I can't say enough how important it is to, you know, continuously motivate your students or even your potential students and provide regular touch points uh, with students or with your patrons um, to just to continuously get them motivated by mentioning uh, just different types of online products and services um, by word of mouth, social media we talked about, uh, newsletter, which can also be physical, not just the digital newsletter and then blogging as well, and that goes hand in hand with you know, the social media and the newsletter. Um, but I just yeah, can't say enough about providing a lot of different examples to your uh, students and potential students about just all the ways they can um, improve their lives, because that's you know, really what it's all about. And that is my last slide. Um, we're at about um, 10.50, so um, what we like to do at the end of each of our um, webinars is to get feedback from um, the attendees of um, one, a specific poll. So we have a poll lined up as far as which of these five websites would you, or I guess they're all websites this time, yeah, would you like us to teach in the future? And then also if you can type into chat any other suggestions that you have for other topics that obviously aren't one of these five and or on Tech Boomers already. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Um, before we jump into that, um, yeah, we're going to put a poll up to get your answers for that. And here, why don't I get that going now? I'm going to pull back control to my screen. There we go. And then there it is. You should see the poll come up in just a second on your screen. Oh, there it is. There you go. So go ahead and um, choose which one you think you would want. Um, and I can see the poll pro progress here. You can't see it yet, but you'll see when I get the final answer. It looks like Google Drive is way ahead of everyone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling it might be. Yeah. I know we do use it, I use it for many things, um, both personal and work related. Um, it's been very useful, yes. Yeah, we have a course on Dropbox, which is what I personally use, so I'm a little biased towards it, but oh, uh, yeah. Google Drive is, um, I think you get a lot more space uh, for free, so it's a good one, and mm -hmm. it's one that we've been putting off since we did have the uh, kind of the alternative solution uh, with Dropbox, but... Okay, we'll leave it for another minute or so. Um, about 75% of you have voted. It tells me that, too. So I know that not everybody has made a choice. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah. Usually we get about 75% yeah. voting in total. Yeah. So, And, and the other you... thing to mention, too, is that if um, if the attendees have any questions for me at all, this is a good time to, to ask that, and you could relay them, Krista. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you have any other questions um, about the presentation or anything else to ask Steve about Tech Boomers about or about digital, train, digital literacy training in general, um, typed in there. But also, you had mentioned any other ideas for um, things you guys can cover on Tech Boomer. Someone else already did say, what about OneDrive through Microsoft? Do you already have something on that? or We do not. Um, that's a good idea, and it's probably one we should definitely check off the list in the future. Mm -hmm. um, if we're doing Google Drive, well, if Google Drive wins this, we're going to be releasing that course within the next month. So mm -hmm. um, OneDrive, we'll put that on the list for the next uh, 
online storage solution, but probably not for a little while. For doing yeah, because I know they do. Them. They are pushing it a lot to people. I see a lot of things about that. But OneDrive, I mean, um, it's oh, there. Cool. Well, I'll look into it to see how see the benefits of it. To you know, kind of compare them and get a, look at a review and see how much free storage space because that's a big one. Mm -hmm. People select one or the other. Yeah, and related to Google Drive, one of our um, attendees says, I think. Um, one thing to include with Google Drive is privacy concerns and terms of use. Um, they are different from Dropbox unless you have Google Apps for education, because that Google does oh, have their okay. whole education side too. So that would be something to maybe look into. I'm not sure if you guys already are doing that. That there is the Google Apps for Ed um, specifically that they do offer to schools, educational institutions that be slightly different than straight off just Google Drive that you know you and I as a regular person would use. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely look into that. Thanks. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to close up the poll now so we can see the uh, answers. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much, yeah, Google Drive is up there. Um, and the other one, uh, yeah, Meetup, Pandora, well, Udemy, Udemy is the second place, then Pandora, and Travelocity and Meetup at a tie at last place. <laughs> so I guess that's who will be next. <laughs> yes, so we will um, we'll release that in within the next month. We're actually putting up a Kickstarter on Monday, um, but we'll oh. get started on Google Drive. It's it's probably going to be a bigger one than the average course, and mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we'll have that up, and I'll be sure to mention to you, Krista, once it is up, and if you could. Um, Maybe add that course link to the page or let the attendees oh, know sure. if possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we can promote it out to our, our yeah, out that way, yeah. Um, some other, um, su uh, well, another suggestion is um, Hoopla, um, which is uh, a good library centric one. It's a, um, have you, do you know anything yeah. about that? Yeah, that, that's something that a lot of libraries are getting into now. It's been promoted to them as a good, um, uh, service to offer digital movies, um, music free, and a lot of libraries are providing that. So that would be something if you're looking to go towards the library specific world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we have uh, Overdrive there now, and that was requested at one of the, uh, I think the Alaska State Library webinar, maybe with the one, a different one. But um, yeah, no, uh, Hoopla is one, and there's a couple other ones out there too. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to remember the other library focus services. Can't think of them though. There's also Freegal that they use. Freegal, yes, that's yep, it. Yep. Um, and well, there's something else I was thinking. Of. Oh, Zinio for magazines. Yep. Oh yeah. Zinio, that's one that mentioned. Yep. Um, we have uh, we have like a roadmap and Excel spreadsheet with all of the suggestions um, or all of the potential ones, and uh, all of those are on it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so many websites and apps out there, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And then Overdrive, someone mentions, that's something that's specifically a service that libraries provide that's not, um, that the libraries have to pay for to get that one. So Overdrive for ebooks and the audio books. Um, we actually have a group subscription here in Nebraska for our libraries, too. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. we do have the an Overdrive course. That's the one we use. Oh, we cool. All right. With. There you go. There you go, Joan. Go to their page and look. search for Overdrive. Um, all right. I'm going to get rid of the poll here now. Um, do you want me to put back to your screen, uh, Steve, or do you have anything else to show? Um, no, just kind of a final slide that has, um, well, I'll just say my email address is steve at techboomers.com. Um, I love connecting with, with librarians and any digital literacy teachers out there. So, um, yeah, please email me if you want to just talk about digital literacy, talk about tech boomers, talk about anything at all. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Great. All right. Um, we do have some questions that came in. If you do have any other questions or suggestions, um, I'll also be able to pass this on to you afterwards as well, Steve, if you didn't get all these uh, ideas and things from the chat. Um, do you have a video about tech boomers that we could show patrons about the benefits of using your site? Um, obviously, this training, the, our recording here will be available, but I think he's thinking about something shorter. <laughs> Like a yeah. couple of minute yeah. long, here's our, you know, sales pitch. <laughs> yeah, we do actually. Uh, we don't yet. Uh, um, and we actually have a, um, a library version of that too. But yeah, we'll have a, it'll be up on our homepage. I'm hoping within three weeks, four weeks. We've already filmed some footage and um, created the audio files. We just need to kind of piece it all together. But it will kind of be like a, an explainer video, a two minute of, Quick tour and that kind of thing, which I think will help explain it to um, people that come to the site for the first mm -hmm. time. We Perfect. do have a 
um, a page in that I should have pointed this out, but in the top right of all of our pages in the header, we have a page that um, you'll see in a green button. It says first time start here. Um, oh, yeah, there it is, I think, on your screen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, new users start here. It used to say first time start here. <laughs> um, and that, that really kind of explains tech boomers at a high level. Um, a video would be much more effective, though, so we, that's mm -hmm. why we decided to add that as well. Yeah, some people like to watch a cute, quick, quick little thing there. And then here are some ideas about what you can get. Yep. And, and one thing to point out, too, is that we actually have a course on how to use tech boomers in the learn section as well. Oh, nice. Um, okay. Yeah. Very meta. <laughs> Um, okay, and then, um, oh, and I think you might have mentioned this earlier, but I know people are coming in. Um, how is Tech Boomers funded? Yeah, so I've been bootstrapping Tech Boomers. I spend about 15, 20 hours a week doing uh, SEO consulting um, myself. That's just to pay the bills for now. Mm -hmm. um, the, in the one slide, I mentioned um, how we make money, and that's prime. That's going to be basically through advertising. All of our courses that are on site right now, and all the ones coming up in the foreseeable future, will be free forever, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of necessary because um, we drive our traffic through search engines. And if we hide our hit our tutorials and courses behind a paid wall, Google wouldn't access them, and you know we wouldn't have our marketing channel. Uh, uh, but yeah, different types of advertising. Um, it, it really we want to focus our ads on websites and apps that we teach people how to use. So you'll see on our site right now we have um, Amazon ads. So a lot of those um, is going to be our, are going to be our main focus. And in the future we're going to look to establish partnerships, kind of tighter partnerships with um, kind of one main website or app in each niche. So there are many ways to stream music online. What we'd hope to do is partner with one of them and promote them throughout that, that section and those pages on our website. But mm -hmm. uh, we need to get a lot more traffic uh, for those people to want to pay us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And here's some things that I don't know if any of these, like any of these, you had mentioned these earlier in your presentation, the security and online safety organizations. I'm not sure if they would be something that would, if they would uh, be helpful in that oh. area. Uh, they're nonprofits, so we're not uh, going to ask them to pay us no. anything. <laughs> we no, just have kind of mutually beneficial partnerships. We promote each other on social media. Right. We do guest posting. Um, you know, they're just kind of other organizations that are trying to achieve really the, the same high-level goals that we are. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're just trying to help each other build awareness as much as possible. Great. Okay. Um, any other questions? Got it. We're, we just hit 11 o'clock on my clock, but we did start a couple of minutes late. So if you do have any other last minute questions to throw at Steve, you can. Um, when some, someone did ask about the link to the slides, um, Steve will be sending me his slides and we will be posting them onto our um, Encompass Live website. Here we are. Um, this is our main page for um, the show, and right beneath our upcoming ses shows are our archives. So in here is where it will be posted, and everyone here will be sent a link to when it is available and up um, there when our um, recording is processed, when the slides have been uploaded, and they will be here available through the Library Commission SlideShare account. So that's where you'll be able to view and download the slides um, and watch the recording on our YouTube channel. Yep, we'll be adding that to ours as well. Yep. Or linking to it at least yep. from. And all of the links that we were mentioned, I'm going to go through it again just to make sure I didn't miss anything because there were quite a whole lot that were mentioned. Um, we'll go here in our delicious account. So you can see we've got links to all the different Tech Boomers pages and then all the other sites that you might have mentioned um, that were of, um, of use to people. So that will be there as well. As you can see here, we do that. We always have the recording, presentations, any slides, handouts that are included, and then the links. Um, you'll get the same kind of thing for um, today's show. Oh, perfect. That makes it easy. No, yeah, well, we try. Gather it all in one spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, any other questions? Nothing had to come in right now while we were talking. So, I'm going to assume we are good. Um, if anybody does have questions, uh, Steve at techboomers.com, right? Yep. Is that right? Yeah, Steve at techmoves.com is his email address. Um, so thank you very much, Steve. This was great. Um, uh, 
you said this was inspired by your mom, and it reminded me a lot of helping my mother get into these same kind of things. Um, I'm a librarian. My sister is a librarian, so she does depend on us a lot for <laughs> any sort of um, how do I make this thing work. Um, so I will definitely, I think, be sharing your site and some of those other ones with her as well. Okay, great. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to say to wrap up? Nope, nope. Just uh, one last reminder to, you know, for anybody to get in touch with me, I'd, I'd be happy to chat with them. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, I'm looking to see what I got going here. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, that will wrap it up for today's show. As I said, it was recorded and will be able available on that archive page potentially later today. Depends on how long it takes it to process it for me to get it all done. Um, oh. <laughs> usually it goes pretty quickly. Yeah, it depends. The slowest thing generally is YouTube. I mean, we upload it there and they have to process it. And Yeah, uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, other than that, I hope you join us for next week's show, which was just added to our schedule, a little last minute thing, Feeding the Hungry at the Library. Um, Dave Mixdorf from our uh, South Sioux City, Nebraska Public Library. Um, they do this great program um, of teaching community how to grow and, and grow food, their own food. Um, gardening, cooking, all those kind of things together. So he's going to be on the show next week, so definitely join us for that show and any of our upcoming shows. We usually have about a month or two ahead listed here and new ones coming on all the time, so definitely take a look at there and um, sign up for any of our upcoming shows. And if you are a Facebook user, we are also on Facebook, so definitely pop over here to our Facebook page, page give us a like. We do... Um, Post reminders uh, for, of when the, the current today's show is going. So here's today's reminder went up right before the show, letting people know they could pop in on the fly. Um, when the recordings are available, I post over here as well. So if you are a big Facebook user, definitely like us over there to keep up with what the show is doing. Um, other than that, that wraps it up for this week's show. Thank you very much, and we will see you next week on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>